So, welcome to Node Auth. We're going to try to do this quick. We're going to try to do it dirty. Uh, we're going to try to do it with as few frameworky library kinds of things as possible. And we need to accomplish these three tasks. Uh, auth involves creating users, uh, verifying that somebody is who they say they are, and then protecting resources based on that. So we're going to start with number one, creating users. I have nothing up this sleeve, nothing up this sleeve. I'm going to make a folder called uh, front end, and I'm going to make one called back end. And then I'm going to go into the back end folder, and I'm going to start by uh, making a node app. So since we're doing quick and dirty, npm init dash y, pew, we got a new project. And if we do npm install, and we're going to install express cores bcrypt jot, uh, we're going, oh actually it's not jot, it's json web token, like that. And connects and PG. So all those express, cores, bcrypt, JSON web token, connects, PG. Uh, we might have some other dependencies that will get, get us started. So let those roll. And then we're going to touch index.js. So I have those dependencies installed, and I've got an index.js file. So I am going to vim index.js, I have an empty file, I'm going to bring in express. Uh, I'm going to make an app out of it. And then I'm going to tell that app to listen on either process.env.port or um, let's call it 4000. And then this callback that you put in here, that's optional, but it'll let us know that we did something. Cool. So I should be able to node index.js and see something, and I do. Um, first thing I'm going to fix is I'm going to npm install flag big D node mon. And then I'm going to npx nodemon index.js. What that does is anytime I change the file, it will automatically reload. Kind of nice. All right, so our goal here is to create a new user. So we're going to make app.post to users. Oh, then pick a different number. Request response. What you got? I changed it to 5,000 okay. now. It says listening. Okay. I don't know why. I don't remember making that work. Was it node node mon in there? NPX node mon. Any other questions about what we've done so far? All right. 
So uh, to create a user, we're going to look for a username and a password. Bare bones. So to do that, we're going to have to parse it out of the request. So we'll use const body parser equals require body dash parser. And then we'll do app.use body parser dot json. Like that. That'll make it so we can re read uh, request bodies. Then we would presumably destructure out a username and a password out of rec.body. Rec body for me. That should be uh, time is time time is time. Oh my god. One of these days. Give us a suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and now I want to sanity check myself a little bit. Uh, I'm doing a lot of typing, not a whole lot of checking. So I'm going to do response.json and then pass username and password. And if I did that right, I should see whatever I pass in come right back to me. Let's fire up Postman. And we will take um, the localhost, whatever your port was, users over in the body. U and P. I want to make sure that you have um, raw as the type on this and JSON as the subtype. And then um, you're typing this. The double quotes matter. Um, all that kind of stuff matters. So yours should look like this. And right now, if we do this, I should see those fly right back to me. And there they are. So if you are keeping up to speed, that's what you got. Oh, hello, Aaron. You there? Can you hear me? Want to say something? Uh, me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Aloha. So um, this is what we have so far. We've installed some dependencies. We've brought okay. in bcrypt, cores, express, JSON web token, connects, pg, and nodemon. And our, what we're trying to do right now is create new users. Uh, so we've made this post handler for users. We can read in a username and a password and we can poop it back out. Um, so first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, hash that password. Why? Don't want to store plain text passwords in our database. So we got to get a hash of it so that we can store that. Uh, so this is where bcrypt comes in. Let's take a look at the bcrypt docs. To hash a password, I believe these work with promises too. Yeah, there we go. So we do bcrypt.hash, whatever the password is, however many rounds we want, and then we get that hash back. So let's see if we can get that to work. I'm going to bring in bcrypt. And then I'm going to do bcrypt.hash. Yeah. We're going to pass in password. And let's do 12. 10 is the default. Uh, in 2019, 12 is about the number we want on that. 
the higher the number is, the more secure it is, but the longer it takes to do uh, a password comparison. So um, uh, you're just keeping up with how fast a cracker's computer is. So 12 is about right for 2019. And then we're going to dot then off of that. So we should get the hashed password out. And if we response.json with the hashed password this time, we should see a whole bunch of silly characters come out. Let's see if it works. That looks like a hashed password to me. Have I ever seen one? Make sure that yours looks exactly like mine. It's not the use of this word, it's not finding that from the require, just a require right, a secret right. Um, no. Okay, open up that new modules folder again. Oop. Just do NPMI decrypt. Why does it have a key to correct? It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's like another great reason to not sudo NPM install anything. That could be super malicious shit that's just expecting people to fat finger the thing. Yeah. You sudo install it, it's got root access to your computer now. Um, but the answer is you delete out your package JSON, you delete your lock file, you delete your node modules folder, then npm install again. Okay, so. Sorry, everybody. No, you're fine. All right, so we're hashing a password correctly. Now, all we have to do is store this username and hash password in a database, and we are done with step one. So, 
we are going to in our backend folder we're going to type connects init we'll get a connects file and we're going to import connects uh oh so do npx connects init All right. And then we're going to require it in. Next, we're going to make a variable called config. And uh, config is going to be require dot slash connects file. So this is requiring in that connects file that we just made. All that exports is an object. Module that exports, this object. It's got a whole bunch of horse shit that it populated in there. And what we want to do is we want to be able to select the right key for this. So development, staging, production, whatever. Or default to production if we don't specify anything. So the way that we do that is with square brackets. And we say I want it to be... Um, process.env.node underscore env or development. So if this variable is set, use whatever that is. Otherwise, use development and give me all the connection information from that. Node env is like set by Heroku, for example, to production. So then over here in our connects file, we can say however, however you connect to this database, um, that's how we do it. So for us, we're going to get rid of everything but development. We're going to change the client to PG. And we're going to change the connection, which is currently an object. We're going to change connection to a string. And we're going to set it equal to um, 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 PostgreSQL colon slash 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 three slashes and what do we want to call this app? Give me a name. Thanksgiving. And then we need to make a Thanksgiving database so we do that with create db thanksgiving done. So now we can connect to this database. Dope. And then we're going to uh, yes. Okay. Then over here, we're going to make a database <coughs> database connection out of that. So we'll say database, or uh, const database equals connects, and we pass in that config. Now we can do database.select, database.insert, all that kind of stuff. Connects is done. Cool, so we want to create things in the user's table. So let's make a migration for that. Do connects, or npx connects if you don't have it globally installed. Uh, connects, migrate, colon, make, and we'll call this users. Makes a, uh, makes a file for us. We are going to open that migration file. We're going to return connects.schema.create table users, or hey, we're not in Rails, user. Old man probably likes single, singular table names. Um, and then we'll pass in a function. 
that does user dot increments. That's its ID. User dot um, uh, username. Oops. User dot string. Username and user string. We can call it password digest. We can call it. We can call it whatever we want. Um, I'll call it password hash. And then on the down, return connects.schema.drop table if exists user. So if we run um, connects migrate latest, like connects migrate latest, like that. We should see that if you see something else, you didn't do it right. How do we keep it up? Good. Cool, random migrations. Random migrations, I ah, kick it ass. So let's go back to our index.js. We've hashed the password. Now we want to do database user insert username and then hashed underscore password is hashed password. I think it's password hash. Oh, was it? Yeah, I think you're right. Good call. Password hash. Correct. So that uh, inserts the user. Badass. While we're at it, we can do a dot returning and give it a star, and it'll give us back the entire record we just created. And then we're going to dot then off of that. So we have, it's plural because uh, connects queries always return arrays, because like we could theoretically insert more than one user. And then we're going to response.json I'll bet I can spread users zero I'm kind of curious if that works and while we're at it I'll set the status to 201 because it created something all right, let's see what worked. If I go over to Postman, that sure looks like a user to me. What was the status of 201. So if we do all that, we have created a user. Well, I don't know why it's stuck on Zoom. Weird. Huh. I don't know what's going on there. Whatever. So, step one, create a user. Sick. Now, I have a question for you two, and uh, you, Aaron, if you want to chime in. What do I need, what are the steps that I need to follow to get this second step? Somebody, um, somebody says that they're the user that we just created. How do we know whether or not that's true? Let's make a route called login that does that. Uh, App.post slash login. Request, response. And I'm going to take this um, 
Well, let's see, it's U and P. That's what we use to make this. All right. So I'm just going to make a note of that so I don't forget. All right, so when I log in, um, I'm getting a username and a password, and I want to verify that that username has uh, something that hashes to that, that password hashes to the same one in the database. So how about I start the same way? I'll take in their username and password out of the body, and um, I want to look up that user. So we can say const, well, it's not, not really going to work that way. Database user select, and we probably want username and password hash. Um, actually, let's take the whole thing. We'll say uh, select everything where uh, user name is username. And then we only want the first one. This doesn't work with inserts, but it does work with selects. So dot first. This well, is. Do, sorry. Yeah. Do we have to do that if presumably no one can have the same username? Sure. Uh, because Connex is trying to keep a consistent um, interface. So every single query returns an array. Hmm. It doesn't sometimes return an array and sometimes return an object. Even if there's only one object. Even if there's only one thing in there. So if I know I only want one thing back, I do dot first. Uh, this is actually a great use case for async await. So all we need to do to use that is put async in front of this and await in front of this. And now we can assign the user like that instead of dot thinning. All right, so we async await that user. And now we can say something like, if there was no user, then we want to response dot uh, send status 401. Unauthorized. Nice try, baby. Otherwise, well, we'll just leave it at that. So if there was no user at all, then you didn't put in the right username. If there was a user, we still need to check the password. So um, just to clean this up, why don't we change user to found user? And you can try to do like hash it and then compare your hash to the one in the database. Don't do that. That's stupid. Uh, Bcrypt has a way to do that built in. Compare. So if we run uh, compare these two passwords, that'll tell us whether or not they're a match. So we do um, bcrypt dot compare. Uh, where is it? Plain text password. So password. And the hash, which is found user um, dot uh, password hash. And since that's a promise and we're already using async await, we can await that also. Um, so we can say that like const password matches, something like that. You almost always do, but you don't have to. Okay. You're taking whatever this returns, whatever the first argument of the dot then would be, that's what you get back from that. What is the, I know this is like a, 
at least using the no async away seems to be preferred without them, at least in a lot of sort of. sentencing. It's uh, OOP versus FP. Okay. Then in catch is the FP way to do it. Uh, async away is the OOP way to do it. Okay. So like we never had to do this in Ruby. Right. Ruby just async awaits everything under the hood. Okay. Uh, so if you have an async operation, it just figures it the fuck out and you don't do anything with it. That's super not FP. So uh, we handle it with dents and catches. I like dents and catches way more in general, but uh, I think there are cases like this where it cleans it up a little bit. To a point, here's the fucking problem. Now you have to try catch that shit. So let's say my database, which might be on a different server, uh, somebody saw it through the internet connection and it's down. What do I want to happen? Well, what I need to do is try to do this and then catch any errors, um, and then uh, like do something like response dot response dot json uh, error is error dot message, and I can I can wrap all of that in a much more repeatable pattern in FP that reads a lot better than that does. So every single async await example you see, like, oh, that's so elegant, it just looks like synchronous code. It's great for us right now, but dot catches have their place. Fucked up thing too, though, you can, you can mix and match them. Since this is a promise, you can also catch it. Whatever, sidebar. Um, all right, so password. Uh, I'll say this, is password match. Anytime you're working with a Boolean, that's a way you can kind of hint to yourself that uh, it, this should be a Boolean thing. Is, has, something like that. Is password match. So now we can go if not is password match. Same thing. And otherwise, that means it is a password match. So we do response dot, uh, now we need a token. So we're gonna take that found user and we're going to jotify it. So, NP, there we go. All right, so let's require it in. Const jot equals require JSON web token. And then we'll do um, jot.sign. And we're going to sign found user. Well, mm, yeah, sure, why not? We're going to sign that, and then uh, it takes in uh, a, a secret code. So we're just going to put this at the top of the app, const secret in capital letters equals A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Normally, you'd read that out of an environment variable. Ah, fuck it, I'm a grown up, we can do this. So, we're gonna, um, uh, npm install.env, good catch, Katie. No, I this up. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna npm install.env, uh, and then we're gonna touch.env. Note that the package is dot spelled out. The file you make is um, an actual dot, and then uh, we're going to echo um, a b c d e f g into dot e n v like that. To use this at the very top of this file, we do require 
dot env dot config and invoke it. And now process dot env dot secret has the secret that we put in. So over here, this can be process dot env dot secret. Cool, it's signed. Could we assign secret? Uh, no, we super didn't. Who raised me? Secret equals, there we go. No spaces, no quotes, nothing like that. It's super plain. All right, so uh, we sign it with a secret. I'm going to say, yeah, fuck it, let's do it synchronously. So we'll say that this is the token. We've signed that, and now we want to response.json token. So let's take a look at this entire method. Pull out the username and password out of the body. We find that user in the database. If we don't find a user, wrong username. We check their password. If the password doesn't match, wrong password, buddy. That means, so if all of those go through, that means that it's the right username, the right password. So we sign the user object with the secret and send it back. Pew pew. So let's see if it works. If I post to slash login, username and password, does it give me a token? It gives me a token! Oh, yeah. And check this out. If I take that token that I got back and put it in that little jot preview thing, on the jot website, hey, look. Should probably take out the hash. <laughs> I don't want to send that back. But hey, what the fuck? I signed it. I encrypted it. Not really. I mean, a hash that goes with it. How come they can see my username and stuff? Isn't that supposed to be secret? What's the deal with signing that? This is important. Why sign it if I can see what's inside? change the values and I can do whatever I want. But the signatures won't match anymore. So when they rehash it, they'll get a different thing and they'll know that you tampered with it. All right, so. Oops, I didn't like something I just did. So I just stripped out the password because I still don't want to send the hashed password even though it's hashed. No, no sense in just arming people with tools they can use to fuck with me. All right, there it is. There's our token. 
If I examine this one, there it is. Send back my ID, send back my username. IAT is um, issued at time. That's the timestamp that this was created. There we go. So, uh, sanity check. Psych, my username's K. Unauthorized, no! Uh, psych, well, I think the password is Q. No, unauthorized. U and P, A. So we have successfully authenticated who somebody is. Okay. All right. Questions about anything we've done so far? It does at first, but like, this is not the most robust auth system. We haven't touched authorization at all, so like, there might be student permissions and teacher permissions and administrator permissions. There's value in like the more complicated ways, but if we're trying to understand the flow, which helps us debug a lot better, why not start here? All right, so we've done this part. Now we need to protect a resource. So uh, somebody wants to app.get slash um, secrets. And so they should get a 403 if they don't give me a good, um, a good token and they should get some secret thing otherwise. So we'll say request response. And the first thing that we need to do is um, get the token out of the body. Wreck that body. And then we're going to use that jot library again. And we're going to verify it. We run jot.verify with the token that we get, or whatever our secret is, and that should give us a decoded jot. So um, let's see, that would be const jot. Now, decoded token equals jot.verify token, then process.env uh, dot secret. Oh, and right above this, if they didn't give us a token at all, you can say if not token, then um, response.send status 403. I mean, know the difference between a 401 and a 403. The words are unauthorized and forbidden. They refer to different things. Unauthorized is, I know who you are, buddy. 403 is, I know exactly who you are and you're not allowed to do this. Yeah, actually, I guess in that case, 401 would be more appropriate. Um, 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 um. All right, so if they don't have any token at all, nice try, asshole. But if they do have a token, then I want to decode it. And um, really, the big thing that I want out of that is their ID. 
So I want to destructure their ID app. And then I want to get their user. So I can say database user select um, and um, where ID is ID. Give me the first one. And um, that might look up preferences. I might look up all my purchases. I might look up whatever from the database on that. But um, I could say like if um, username is you, then do these things. Otherwise, I know who you are, but nice try, asshole. But also, as we can just do something like uh, response.json um, secret info. Here you go. See if it works. So I got this token. Oh shoot, I forgot. I have to actually pull the token out. Ah, oh, I guess I am. Um, instead of sending it in the body, though, especially since it's a like, this is a get request and gets don't have bodies. Where we'd really probably put this is I'm going to copy all this. I'm going to go over to authorization. I'm going to do bearer token. And then I'm going to put the token in here. All that does, this is in the authorization tab in Postman, is it puts in the, a header called authorization, and it puts the value equal to bearer space all of this. Kind of. It's just characters, not technically a string. See? Authorization, error, all that shit that is doing. So now, instead of pulling the token out of the body, it's really request.headers.authorization. Uh, dot split on the space first index. So it's bearer space the actual token. So let's split it into an array of bearer and then what the token is and then the second one. And no, uh, we don't destructure that. That just is what it is. Awesome. Don't need to pass anything there. So we should be able to get to secrets. What do we get back? Here you go. I got this. I got the stuff. And if I pass it the wrong token, if I just put X in front of that and try to send it, womp womp, invalid token. Oh, yeah. If there's no token, we do that. We also want uh, in this, we probably want to try catch that. So if there's an error, um, we want to response dot send status four oh three. Now, if I do that, 403, forbidden. If I go back to authorization, I take the X off the front. Yep, ID is not defined. A fucking block bullshit. Hang on. This is so stupid. Let ID 
Um, and then that. Yeah. Nope. Let ID equal null. Try catch is the fucking worst. Let. Yeah, maybe this. There we go. And I can probably take that null off. Cool. So now we have protected an endpoint. Here's the coolest part about this, and this is what uh, this is literally all that Passport really does under the hood. Is all right until I have app dot get other secrets where I need to do almost all of the exact same shit. Like, if this is ultimately what I'm trying to do, but here you also go. If I'm trying to do that, but I need to do all this other stuff first anyway, check this out. We're going to make a function called authenticate. It takes in a request and a response. And we are going to copy all of this stuff into it. Correct. And even once we get the user, um, we need to await that user. Check this out. I can do um, request.user equals user. And then one last thing, we're going to add next as a third parameter to authenticate. Then at the bottom, we call next. So now that, uh, so all that is separate. We made a function definition. We're not using it anywhere. Neither of these endpoints are protected anymore until you do that. Now, if I look at other secrets, so secret still works. Nope, not about something. Oop, that uh, await. Yeah, so over, this function needs to be an async function because we're using await inside of it. All right, secret still works. Other secrets still works, and other secrets. If I fuck up the token, will also protect me. So let's take a quick look at what we did. You can put as many other, these are called middleware functions. You can put as many of them in this as you want, and they'll just do them one after the other. But what this did is it gave us an opportunity to reject something that uh, isn't right. It also, and this is, this is what Passport does, it put a key called user on the request object that was equal to the user that owned that token. And so if over here I did console.log request.user. And watch my uh, console. I send that. I get it back. Oops, I'm the wrong one. Got it. Hey, look. So I can attach my user from the database. And now all of those route handlers 
can see the user that was found just because I called that authenticate middleware. Fucking sick! Questions? You have to have the third. Oh, here, up here. Yeah. Aaron, how you doing? Good. Sorry, my mic was muted. <laughs> what questions? So any protected routes, you just list them? You just put authenticate before you actually handle it. That's it. You want to see that in action? The uh, the new site, the standard site. In the front of that, are you just storing? Do you need to store the token? In the store the token in local storage. Every time you send a request, just send an authorization header that has bearer space that token. That's it. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Username and password, post it. So um, for the, okay, so this is the new standard site. And this um, might give you some ideas for uh, file organization and shit too. All those functions that we're using there, we can also break these out. So like, um, I could call this, function login controller async function login controller that takes in a request and a response. I just copy all the login shit into that. And then instead of like inlining this, Whenever you have a post request to this route, this is the controller that handles that. So I have those all in different files. So I pull in these controllers. Uh, I pull in my authentication uh, middleware. And these are all the routes in the application. Some of them are authenticated, some of them aren't. But this is the, this is the router for my app. And then the next step would be to break out all the modules into their own thing and all the standards into their own thing and actually use the express uh, router that's built in. But it's pretty, pretty trivial to do it after that. Questions? If you want to see what I think is like a pretty well laid out um, Express app, if you go to my GitHub, Motherbrain, that's like the finest Express work I think I've ever done, uh, which is awesome because nobody ever fucking used it. But um, the way that I did uh, routing and all that kind of stuff in there, I was really happy with how that turned out. Cool. Let's, uh, let's finish up the day. Bye, Aaron. See you guys. Bye.